Welcome back to episode 10 of Hot Eats. We are here at Station 74 with the Spring Fire Department. Guess who's back? I'm so excited. Frenchie from episode one. You guys remember the French bread? That was probably one of our most popular episodes. Yes, it was the very first one. Yeah, it was. So what are we back doing well. today? Today we're back to do a recipe that would go very well with that uh, the French oh. bread. A little salmon that uh, my captain likes a lot. Okay, awesome. Well, what do we need to get started? So to begin with, I usually start with the rice. I'm gonna give my little secret, just like I gave secrets on the first episode. Um, I like to pre-wash the rice, throw rice in the pot and put some water in it and, and don't wash it. So I'm about to show you here. So I don't know if we're seeing this non clear pot. You're just gonna wing it like that? Oh yeah. Wow, I'm impressed already. Just wing it, so you just fill up the pot with cold water. Once you have enough water, you just kind of stir it around with your fingers and as you can see the water is just turning yeah. white it's all of the and all of the the starch that's yeah. just detaching from the from the rice so you gotta rinse that and if you do that you have a rice that is not sticky full of flavor and every grain will you know just be free flowing so so don't be lazy rinse your rice yes all the white water here that's the starch that's in it so i usually do it two three times I like this technique, I haven't done it that way, so I will definitely do it for like that from now on. It's much easier. So as you can see, the water is now a little more clear. So I usually put a little more rice in the pot because I always drop some. Yeah, right. <laughs> always drop some in the sink, so you gotta account for the, for the losses, you know? <laughs> All your water is out. And now, what I do, I don't really count in cups or ounces or anything. What I do is try to make sure my rice is flat in the pot. Okay. And I have about one knuckle above the rice so your water you want about this much water above the rice so <laughs> so just enough water and then timer is going to be your secret okay just enough water then you're going to put that on the stove for 15 minutes so what i do now is i'm going to let the water boil okay. put a little salt in it so always put the salt in the palm of your hand that way you don't put too much in the pot you know, you just yeah. you don't have any bad surprise so put some salt evenly distribute it in there take a few a few squares of butter and throw that in there when the water starts boiling what we're going to do is turn it down to the minimum give it 15 minutes to cook at the 15 minute mark you turn off the uh, the gas and then you give it 15 minutes to rest and then it'll be ready and you get perfect rice yeah, take a Oh, those are really I've never I don't know any most of those tips I don't think I've ever heard you know just a little bit of water over the rice and I'm gonna try it like this so while the rice is boiling uh, we can go back here to the salmon so yeah. obviously the salmon was in the fridge not long ago so you get some salt in your hand and you just sprinkle it over you know, kind of like that <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that's a beautiful salmon cut. It is. We had La Boucherie uh, hook us up with the meat. And Actually, it means the, the meat market in French, La Boucherie. Yeah! So. The company was initially on 1916 TC Jester. In 2020, we opened up here. This is our scratch kitchen. We make everything from scratch. Um, from all our stuffings that go into our products. This is our walk-in blast freezer. I don't think you want to go in there. Okay, it is very, very cold in there. It's minus 20 with 25. Oh my God! With 25, 25 an hour winds. That is very cold. It's very cold, very right. windy. The OEA family has been great to us. They're, they're good, they're, they're a good family owned company and we, we appreciate them and we, we work hard for them. A little pepper on it and then it's gonna be very easy to cook it'll be six minutes on the on the salmon side two minutes on the skin side okay and then it'll be ready so oh, I can't that's wait to try that it's that's kind of my my gauge six okay. minutes on one side two minutes on the other now depending on the thickness if you have a little thicker salmon this one is nice and even which is perfect for this recipe but sometimes you have a very thick side and then a very thin side uh, what I do is probably about seven and three, you know, seven minutes on one side, three minutes on the other. Okay. If I have thinner salmon, I do five and one and a half minute, something like that. So the salmon is ready. So before we uh, cook the salmon, we don't forget our rice. So what I do is once the water bo is boiling, at that point, I will kind of like stir it around gently, flatten it again by shaking it, put the 
lid on top, 15 minutes, we turn off the gas and it's ready for another 15 minutes and then the rice will be ready and during the whole cooking time you never touch the lid. That's always my, my golden point in the station, you do not touch the lid when I'm cooking rice. Okay, because it's gonna steam, like it's gonna steam itself with the, the steam inside the pot. So, now we can uh, take care of our salmon here. I like to cook it with butter and olive oil because it increases the flash point so it won't smoke as much so you can get it hotter and it will not smoke as much. You're gonna have to let that pot, that, um, that skillet get a little warm and so you obviously gonna need a secondary timer on hand just so you can time your salmon, six minutes, two minutes like we said earlier. So I use my butter and my olive oil here and uh, I like to put the butter in the pan once the pan is actually warm. I do not like to put it in there when it's cold because it will go through all of the stages and sometimes it might pick up a taste like a burnt taste to it and it's not very good so you gotta let your pan get up to temperature and then you can just uh, gently put your butter in there you see it'll start melting right away and then a little little squirt of olive oil in there so like I said you can you can cook hotter and it, it will not uh, smoke as much you let the butter the butter melt and kind of mix with the olive oil here so you get like a nice foamy airy uh, concoction I guess yeah it's hot and ready you have your salmon here with with uh, salt and pepper on it. Oh, okay, well this one has no skin, but... Oh. So with no skin on it, you'll do what? How about Six, I mean, you do it six minutes, it'll give it like a nice golden, almost like a crust on top, but not like a hot crust, like a very delicate crust. This honestly seems like a really easy weeknight meal. It's a very easy, I mean, the, the result is quite good, yeah. but it's honestly, it's a very easy meal to do. So. Yeah, my kid, I, we can't keep salmon fast and I mean it goes so fast and there's salmon usually three. seconds being served I mean they it's full of omega-3 omega-3s omega and good fats and all kinds of stuff if I bake it it would be usually for like 15 minutes yeah so but six minutes two minutes now we can move on to the yes, ingredients let's do it. now rinse our hands obviously the hand hygiene is the most important part of the yeah, of the whole cooking experience hot eats we'll be back in one minute Meet your local spring firefighters, deputies, paramedics, and more. Kids can earn cool prizes as the entire family learns important safety information, all while touring the unique community of Old Town Spring. Meet those who keep our community safe at Spring Into Safety Day in Old Town Spring. This message is brought to you by the businesses of Old Town Spring. Okay, so one of the reasons why I like this meal is because it's full of veggies. So as you can see, we're gonna have spinach here, we have cherry tomatoes, we have our herbs, we have mushrooms that are coming here in a little bit. We have some cheese and cream. I mean, it's very, very rich and very filling. It's not that expensive, so when we're on the on the budget, like in the fire station, you know, we we uh, we have to watch how much money we spend. So very good meal, full of veggies, and we're gonna start here with. The cherry tomatoes. Okay. All right. Boom. In the trash, and what we can do is cut them in half. Is this a popular dish in France? Something like uh, that. Uh, like I said, it's a, a recipe that my captain sent me, and it's Sorry. not necessarily a French recipe, but it's a recipe I've made my own, and it's a definitely a, a crowd pleaser. I would say it's a, if you like salmon, this is a very good way to eat salmon because usually you eat salmon, it's like baked, you know, right. it's your right. usual salmon that's that's baked in the oven for a few minutes. And... All right, so we got our tomatoes and now we're gonna- We got our tomatoes, our spinach is ready. We have mushrooms yeah. that we kind of pre-cut earlier, but you can take whole mushrooms like this, whole baby bella mushrooms and uh, quarter them. If they are really big, you can- So good. Uh, cut them in eight. Oh. Here, so 
it's very very rich in flavor very good for you very rich in vitamins because you have vitamin d in the mushrooms you get tomatoes you get your spinach you get iron all kinds of good stuff in there right. so your passion for this is contagious because you have me ready to like race to the store get all the ingredients and cook this for supper tonight because this just is well, fun you know, it's, it's, make it. and it's very fast to do so our timer is about to run out for the salmon here all right let's so we're gonna that. go check it we have all of our ingredients ready what we do is take the salmon off the fire once we're gonna flip it one more time let it cook okay. then take it off the fire set it on the plate and start cooking the ingredients awesome so welcome Michelle to my station, Thank station you. 73. So here it is, Booster 73. We're loaded with equipment. And this is a truck that we use for brush fires, grass fires, anything that's kind of off-road. You have the option to start the pump in the back and then be on the side. And if you had, you know, like extended brush fires like all over the place, you could be on the side on each side and be spraying water at the same time as you're driving. And as you can see over there, we have a boat thing about two years ago we had some some pretty major flooding that neighborhood that's right behind us when it rains a little too much it floods very quickly so we actually hooked the boat onto the booster here and we turned that from a brush fire truck to like a boat towing truck and then we take the boat where we need to be so here we have your hand tools your saws we have a little uh, fire extinguisher if we need here with two and a half gallons of water. We have chainsaws here that we check you know, every morning. The Indian backpack, they carry five gallons of water. If we need to, we just put that on the back. And with five gallons of water, same thing, doesn't sound like that much, but you actually you have quite a long time of you know just putting out yeah. little brush fires here and there. We get a decent amount of, of brush fires, especially around like the 4th of July or in summer. Uh, people that discard you know, cigarettes, I guess it's a good advice, don't throw your cigarettes right. out the window. That's just right. put, them, well, put them out, you know, just put them in the trash. But then we have also our, what we call the booster line, the red line. So 200 feet of one inch uh, hose line here. Or we have 500 feet on this side of forestry line, 50 foot increment. So you can break that down to however you want and then you connect it to your discharges here and then you can go fight the fire. Right. And this is all of your pump assembly here and we test that every morning. So talk to me a little bit about a grass fire and how you would approach that differently than say a house fire or structure fire. So usually grass fires, it'll, it'll really depend on your on your weather conditions, okay? Whether it's wet or extremely dry. Is it windy? Is it not that windy? Uh, if it's windy, you definitely have to mind, you know, the, the wind direction. Most of the grass fires that we see here, they're very tiny. It's like ground cover, what we call like leaves and pine needles and stuff like that. It doesn't go like in California, you know, in yeah. those those big forest fires. So we have a, an assortment of, of tools here. We get fire rakes, fire, just little flappers here, things of that nature. You can just stomp it or just bang on it and put yeah. the fire out that way with no water. All right, Michelle, you ready to go fight some fire? I'm so ready. Frenchie, thanks for showing me all about Booster 73. I'm so confident and ready. Let's go fight some fires. Show us what you got. We'll see you back in the kitchen. Yeah, buddy! Woohoo! Hot Eats will be back in one minute. Welcome to Lynn's Table, right here in the heart of Old Town Spring. At Lynn's Table, you'll find breakfast, lunch, and dinner, including a full ice cream parlor and homemade fudge. So make plans to come try some fresh food thoughtfully prepared right here in the heart of Old Town Spring. Okay, so now we are back with the salmon. So as you can see, it kind of like cooks through. When it cooks like this, you can usually, you can see it. Get a nice big spatula, uh, reaching the end, you know, of the timer. So the rice is gonna be about ready. So we can just 
turn it off completely off let's make sure you don't forget you know for the next 15 minutes you can check on our salmon here it's got a nice color on the other side you can put it on the side on the plate you can cover it with foil if you want to let that rest for a few minutes okay so we have our salmon on the side we can start with our tomatoes here pan fry them there, a little, would you mind casting me some salt please? A little salt and pepper, thank you. So you can very gently put some salt over it, sprinkle some salt. The tomatoes have that little acidity, so you gotta take that off, a little salt and pepper. And when you cook, unless you're nearby, you always wanna make sure that you have your, your handles, you know, just facing away from the side, from the edge of the, of the stove because you could accidentally knock it out or you have you could have a kid you know just coming and pulling on it and you don't want that sort of create bad burns or or kitchen fires and we definitely don't want that for the people you know so and it would be here if it happens but we we don't want it for the people you know so and then we are going to move on to the spinach so i did not get any for today but you could also uh throw some garlic in there if you like garlic oh, yeah. you could definitely put some garlic just Heighten the taste a little bit, you know, just make the, the taste buds happy. And what I like to do is I like to have a bowl here on, on standby and I'm gonna put my ingredients in there one by one. Okay. So, got a big bowl of spinach here, which evidently is gonna cook down. So it looks like a lot of spinach at first, but it's gonna disappear as it cooks. You can add a little more olive oil, a little more salt in there because spinach are kind of tasteless, you know, so. Yeah. Everything is done with salt and pepper and eventually a little paprika towards the end of the of the meal but that's very simple spices that you can find anywhere you know there's condiments. It's all yes. The secret is that you have to keep stirring it. You can't just let it burn, you know, because you're gonna have your cooked spinach completely, you know, just shrunk at the bottom of the pan the pan and then the, the full spinach on top. So you just keep stirring it. From our big bowl of spinach we went down to that. I'm gonna put that here with we can move on to the mushrooms kind of cook them a little bit so a little more olive oil it looks like a lot of oil but it's it's good and healthy for you and mushrooms suck up a lot of oil so uh, they also lose a lot of water a little more salt same thing so every time it's just a tiny tiny amount of salt so it, it Every ingredient is like flavored on its own. And we're just, we're just gonna let the mushrooms cook a little bit, you know, lose some of that moisture that they have in it. We can move to the herbs that we have over there. We have basil and parsley. And then you're just gonna take your, your basil leaf, kind of like gather them together and just cut strips. For this recipe here, we're just going to cut strips. Make sure you don't put pieces of fingers inside you know, or nails. There we have our basil. Let's go check on our mushroom. Okay. When everything is ready, we can put the basil and the parsley in the mushroom. Kind of like cook it all together. Gather it back in the pot. Cook off, uh, cook down the heavy whipping cream with some parmesan, and then we'll be almost ready to eat. Hot eats. We'll be back in one minute. It is Texas law that all drivers must safely move over when a fire truck is behind them. And when passing any stopped emergency vehicle, all drivers must slow down to 20 miles an hour below the speed limit. Fines start at $200, but if someone is injured because a driver refused to move over or slow down, fines can balloon to $2,000 and a judge can order jail time. So please, move over or slow down. Thank you, Planet Ford, for being a proud community sponsor of the Spring Fire Department. mushrooms here they have cooked down a lot and they have like a nice you know golden color here you can add your parsley your pre cut parsley what I do is I usually keep a little piece of parsley for the end you'll see why 
for the presentation at the end, you know, because I mean, food is all about taste, but presentation is about almost as important as the taste, you know, for some people. So right. we put our herbs in there. We're gonna let that cook down. So parsley and basil, kind of swish it around, mix it around. And now, mind, mind you, all the the pan is just getting all the flavors. You know, everything that that cooks inside is getting deposited on the side of the pan. You don't want to cook that too long because you don't want the the herbs to to overcook and lose all the flavor. So just kind of like get them warmed up, a little softened up, and then you put everything back with your tomatoes and spinach there. It's okay if you have some left over in the pan. What I like to do for this reason is take a bowl on the side, use my heavy whipping cream here. So you can use a, a generous amount or not so much. I mean, we're gonna, we're gonna make it worth it, you know? And uh, cream and Parmesan, please. Thank you. And we are going to premix the cream, Parmesan, so I like Parmesan a lot, so just put a good amount, or just a, a generous amount. You can always add more if you want more. You just can take it, take it out. So and a little paprika as well. These are fairly light spices, so you can you can just put you know however much you want. The paprika is really to give it like a, a little reddish color, and you kind of mix all of that together. You pre-whisk that. Now you have your mix in there. You kind of you want to let it thicken up a little bit. You're gonna recapture all of the all of the herbs that are left in the pan, the parsley and basil. So you already have some of it. You have some of the some of the pre-seasoning that you had in the pan that's adding to the cream. And now you can come back and pour your mix oh, here. So, so you have all of the liquid from the tomatoes and the base and the the spinach that's coming back in there you mix all of that and then you're gonna let it cook on medium low again for a few minutes you know you kind of have to gauge there's no there's no real timer for this yeah. it's really it depends on how much cream is in there and how much liquid your veggies have rendered so you don't want it too thick but you also don't want it too liquid so this is kind of like the consistency that you want you know like yeah. semi-liquid not watery, but not too liquid as well. That's awesome. Yeah, and then you can come back with your salmon. Let it sit for a few minutes on low. Let the give a little time for the salmon to, to warm up again. And then it should be ready to ready to eat. Okay, so we have our rice here. After about 30 minutes of, what, 15 minutes of cooking and 15 minutes of resting, it's ready. Now what you can do to make it, you know, a little extra fancy, you can uh, so fluff it up and then take some kind of container here and kind of like pack your rice a little tight in there. See, so I hope it's gonna, it's gonna work as usual. So kind of like clean the edges, like so. Uh, you can like flip it over on your plate. Oh, oh yeah. I love it. Yeah. Ah. Okay. And then what I do is take my little stock of oh parsley gosh. and make it, you know, extra fancy. It's not, it's nothing crazy, but make I it extra, extra fancy for the fire, for the well, fire station. It's just a unique touch, and it takes a whole whopping five oh, seconds. Oh yeah, it's, it takes nothing at all to do yeah. it. And then let me get the salmon here. Okay, well, so my, my little rice tower collapsed and sometimes, you know, that's, that's how it is in life. You just make plans and it doesn't work. You know, life doesn't work according to plans all the time, so. Well, I was going to dive into it anyway, so. Yeah. Well, as far, as far as we have to adapt and overcome, so I guess instead of making it on the side, we'll just put all of that on top of it. So we're just going to put the rice here in the center. Perfect. I like the idea, though, okay? I like where you're going. Usually it, it works. Like, this is unusual and as usual when you when you try to show something you know nothing works all right. it's, it's always like that but you take you take your salmon and you're gonna come place it on top oh yeah and then you can are you kidding this is such a showstopper no matter what you do it, this is awesome there you go. come with your veggies so the presentation on camera is not great but oh i it doesn't I even it's better than it looks. i just want to try it can we try it please Let's go. okay Let's go. 
right, let's do this. Let's try it. It smells incredible. Oh, it's so good. It's not bad at all. It's like it melts in your mouth. So this is not the usual because usually I think. Oh my gosh. But it is not bad at all. And as you've seen, it's a lot of fresh ingredients. Yeah. It's healthy for you. Oh, I love it. Oh, it's outstanding. Frenchie, you outdid yourself here, man. I mean, round of applause. The the flavors for being such simple ingredients, it's it tastes like really complicated. Salt and pepper. So hey, you have a pretty special talent. The table we are sitting at, you made. Yes, yes, I made the table in my garage, my house, my little shop. It's beautiful. It's uh, it's cherry. Uh, I can't weld, so I got to custom order the legs. But oh, yeah, I did gorgeous. everything from the from the tabletop to the inlay, all homemade. Help with the guys, and yeah, it was a fun little project. You guys are so talented. Between cooking, you make the table you eat at for crying out loud. I mean, this is awesome. I'm just so impressed with you guys. Thanks for having us. Oh, thank you. All right, well, we'll see you guys next time on Hot Eats. We'll be cooking up something else yummy in the kitchen. We'll see you then.